Well, hey there, and welcome to episode 12 of Be Hooked TV. I'm your host, Brittany, as always, and I am thrilled that you're here with me today. Now, if you watched last week's episode about gauge and why you should make a gauge swatch, you heard a little teaser about today's episode, and that was that we're going to figure out how many stitches you need for your project. But before we get to it, I would love to hang out with you again next week. So if you haven't subscribed to the show, please go ahead and do that now so you don't forget. I make a new video every single week specifically to help you get better at your craft. So we're gonna look at one main example today, and that is how many stitches do I need to make for fill in the blank? For this episode, we'll keep it super simple because we're just introducing this topic. Now, when you find yourself in the situation where you have a pattern and you wanna make the same pattern in a different size, you'll follow these steps. Step number one, you need to make your gauge swatch. It's always a good idea to follow the gauge that's listed on the pattern. You'll typically find that somewhere at the top or in the notes section. Basically, you need to match your gauge to the gauge in the pattern in order for things to work out as they should. So find the gauge in your pattern, work up your swatch in that stitch pattern that it recommends, and take that measurement. If your stitches match the gauge, then you don't have to change anything with your hook or your needle size. Let's say though your gauge is a little bit bigger, so you have fewer stitches per inch, then you'll need to make up for that difference by going down a hook size or down a needle size. Vice versa, if your gauge is smaller, so you have more stitches, you'll need to go up a hook or a needle size to make up for that. Now, if your pattern gives you the number of stitches per four inches, you'll need to do an extra step to figure out how many stitches you have in one inch. Now you might say, well, I should just count how many stitches I have in one inch. And I mean, that technically is a true statement. However, there is some variability in our stitches and that's why we use those larger measurements so that we can get a more accurate representation of how many stitches really are in one inch of any, any given inch of our project. So in that instance, you would take your number of stitches and divide that by four. The goal here is to figure out how many stitches you have in one inch. Now, once you have that, you can move on to step number two, and that is to figure out how big you want your project to be. Do you want it to be a baby blanket that's 45 inches wide? Do you want it to be a king size throw? It doesn't matter how big you're trying to calculate here. You need to have a measurement in inches because we need to keep the units the same in order to make these calculations. Since our gauge is given in inches in this instance, we'll need to make sure that the size we want is also given in inches. Once you know how wide you want your project to be in inches, you'll simply multiply that by your number of stitches per inch, the number that we found just a moment ago. That will give you the total number of stitches you need for the width of your project. Now, the other bit of information you'll need to know when altering a pattern is how long to make it, how many rows do you need to do? So for this, you'll need to figure out how, how long you want that project to be in inches. Remember, we're keeping the units the same. And then you're simply going to do the same calculation we saw a moment ago. You'll multiply your number of rows per inch, that number you found from the gauge a little bit ago. You'll multiply that by the length that you want. Okay, so let's do a really quick Recap, I don't wanna to get too mathy here. These are really simple calculations, but you do need to keep these things straight. I would always recommend writing it down. I personally have to do this in order to keep everything straight so I don't confuse things or mix numbers up. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that I should never trust my memory, and so I just don't. I've learned the hard way that I have a tendency of forgetting things or transposing numbers and that sort of thing. I always write it down. The two things you'll write down from your gauge swatch is the number of stitches per inch and the number of rows per inch. Now you may have to work that out if your gauge is listed per four inches, per two inches, anything in between. 
Once you have that, you can figure out how wide your project needs to be. So in other words, how many stitches you need to cast on or how many stitches you need to make initially. And then you can also figure out how many rows to make in the project. And you can do that with your gauge. Okay, so I think that is enough math for one day. If you have any questions on this, please feel free to leave them in the comments section. Or if you have any tips of your own to share with the community about how you personally do this, this is just one way. This is one method that I like to use when I am figuring out how I can make a pattern bigger or smaller, and specifically when I'm looking for the number of stitches that I need to start with. All right, now that wraps up another episode of Be Hooked TV. Thank you so much for joining me. It was a real pleasure sharing this topic with you. And if you have another question related to crochet and knitting, please leave that in the comments section as well. Every episode of Be Hooked TV is generated and based off of the things that you need help with. And so you can let me know in the comments section of any episode of Be Hooked TV.